In November 2005, Boeing unveiled its latest version of its iconic plane, the Boeing 747-8. Featuring state-of-the-art engines, cutting-edge aerodynamics, and decades of engineering refinement, it was the most advanced jumbo jet Boeing had ever built. Yet, it captured barely 150 orders. On paper, the 747-8 was a commercial disaster. But what if I told you this failure was actually one of the most brilliant strategic moves in aviation history? You see, in 1993, Boeing did something absolutely bizarre. They approached their biggest rival, Airbus, and proposed working together to study the market for a massive new super jumbo aircraft, a plane that would directly compete with Boeing's own legendary 747. But why would Boeing help their competitor build a plane that could destroy their crown jewel? According to industry insiders, this wasn't an act of goodwill. It may have been one of the most calculated competitive maneuvers in aviation history, and Airbus walked right into it. This is the story of how Boeing weaponized a failure to outmaneuver their biggest rival to dominate the skies. The Boeing 747 revolutionized aviation and dominated the skies for half a century. With six groundbreaking variants spanning five decades, this iconic jumbo jet secured over 1,500 orders worldwide, cementing its legacy as one of aviation's greatest triumphs. Yet here's the paradox. Boeing's crown jewel, the cutting-edge 7478, managed to capture barely 150 orders, representing a mere 10% of the program's total sales. On paper, it looks like a colossal failure. But dig deeper and you'll discover this unsuccessful aircraft was actually a masterstroke of strategic engineering. To understand what happened, we need to go back to the late 1980s. At this time, Boeing and Airbus each developed radically different blueprints for the industry's trajectory. Boeing saw a world of non-stop flights connecting regional airports, diminishing the role of massive interchange points, such as Charles de Gaulle and Heathrow. This model would cut travel time and ease airport congestion, but required developing a fuel-efficient twin-engine plane that could turn a profit on routes with modest passenger volumes. Airbus, on the other hand, was thinking jumbo. I mean, seriously jumbo. Industry projections indicated air travel would surge so rapidly that ground infrastructure simply couldn't expand fast enough to accommodate it. Airbus leaders became convinced that a super jumbo aircraft transporting 500 to 600 people at once was the only practical response to this looming capacity crisis. Even though Airbus had developed solid aircraft like the A320 and A300, Boeing still dominated the industry and they had one aircraft that Airbus just couldn't compete with, the legendary Boeing 747. Its massive size and iconic hump made it synonymous with international air travel. It was a prestige symbol, and frankly, Airbus had nothing like it. Industry analysts even had a name for what Airbus was experiencing. Aircraft envy. Airbus executives became enchanted with the concept that developing an aircraft larger than the legendary 747 would prove Airbus's engineering superiority. If successful, this aircraft could theoretically become the defining plane of the era, much like the 747 had been for its generation, ultimately allowing Airbus to eclipse Boeing as the preeminent aircraft manufacturer in travelers' minds. Soon, Airbus openly declared their plans to build a plane that would go head-to-head -head with the 747. Then came the twist. In the early 1990s, Boeing and Airbus announced something that shocked the aviation industry. They were going to conduct joint market research to evaluate the viability of next-generation 747 alternatives. Wait, what? Boeing wanted to work with Airbus to study the market for a plane that would compete with their own 747? On the surface, Boeing's reasoning seemed logical enough. They argued that developing an all-new super jumbo would cost at least 10 to 15 billion dollars, an absolutely massive investment for such an uncertain market. So why not join forces with another manufacturer to share the risk? After all, if the market wasn't big enough for two competitors, working together made perfect sense, but many were skeptical. While authors like Guy Norris and Mark Wagner saw this as an attempt by Boeing to destabilize Airbus, Others theorized that Boeing was actively trying to lure Airbus into launching the Super Jumbo project, while Boeing secretly pivoted to something completely different. And that's exactly what happened. 
As the study progressed, it became evident that a new four-engine wide body was not economically viable due to various factors like the Asian financial crisis and global oil prices. As a result, Boeing withdrew from the partnership before reaching any conclusions. However, for Airbus, it was too late. They had invested substantial resources and time in planning the new jumbo. So in 2000, the company's board approved moving forward with the A380 program. So why did Boeing abandon the study halfway? To be fair, it's hard to know for sure what Boeing's true intentions were. Some evidence suggests that Boeing simply wanted to gauge whether Airbus was really committed to building a 747 alternative, and if so, wanted to delay Airbus's decision until they knew what they wanted to do themselves. But here's what we know for certain. Boeing and Airbus drew radically different conclusions from that exact same joint market research. And I mean radically different. Airbus concluded that there was a potential market for 1,200 super jumbos, and they hoped to sell at least 750 of them to make the program profitable. Boeing, on the other hand, believed the total market size was only about 800 aircraft, including freighter variants. That's not just a small difference in opinion. That's a massive gap in how they interpreted the data. With the benefit of hindsight, we now know that both of them were wrong, but Airbus was catastrophically wrong. In total, Airbus only managed to sell 251 A380s before ending production. Even if you add the 36 passenger 7478s that Boeing eventually sold, you're still nowhere close to those initial predictions. Boeing had correctly concluded that even their estimate of 800 orders wasn't enough to justify two competing all new super jumbos. So instead, they examined launching an enlarged version of the existing 747-400. In 1996, Boeing went public with plans for the 747-500X, 600X, and even a more radical 700X variants. But the airlines just weren't interested. Many criticized Boeing for remaining idle while Airbus innovated. But Boeing was adamant. According to Boeing, they had done their homework, and the market for a new jumbo just wasn't there. But when Singapore Airlines rejected the 747 in favor of the A380, it genuinely startled Boeing's sales team. Maybe they had made a huge mistake. Well, not exactly. Boeing had a two-pronged strategy that proved absolutely brilliant. While Airbus formally launched the A380 in December 2000, Boeing was already mobilizing massive resources toward developing the 787 Dreamliner. This plane would be packed with groundbreaking technologies never before seen in commercial aviation, technologies that would allow it to become the efficient mid-sized jet needed for the future of point-to-point -point travel. But the truly clever part? In 2005, the same year the A380 was unveiled to the public, Boeing also launched the 747-8 program. Boeing partially knew that this jet would never sell particularly well. After all, they had already concluded the super jumbo market was tiny. So why build it? The answer is pure strategy. By developing a competing jumbo, Boeing placed a massive obstacle in the A380's path toward profitability. Since Airbus shareholders were counting on the A380 to recoup its enormous development costs, Airbus now had to focus all their resources on the A380 to ensure it didn't lose market share to the 747-8. In a scenario where Boeing didn't build the 747-8, Airbus would have had the super jumbo markets all to themselves. Once it became clear that airlines actually wanted mid-sized aircraft like the 787, Airbus could have redirected their resources to develop a proper competitor much faster, thereby affecting the 787's market share. Unlike the A380, which was designed from scratch costing Airbus between $20 and $25 billion to develop, the 747-8 was developed with a significantly smaller budget of about $5 billion because Boeing heavily leveraged the existing 747 airframe. Boeing already had the infrastructure to build it, so they didn't need to establish new supply chains or factories. Airbus was now locked into a horrifically expensive program. Due to technological issues and problems arising from the earlier variant, they were hit with delays of over two years. As a result, they had to abandon plans for a freighter version, losing 20 orders from FedEx and UPS in the process. Meanwhile, the 787 absolutely dominated. It outsold the A380 7 to 1. And when you look at what Airbus offered to compete with the 787, the picture becomes clear. 
It wasn't until 2018 that Airbus delivered the A330neo, a full seven years after the first 787 was delivered. Moreover, the newly introduced A330neo lacked many of the advanced features that made the 787 so efficient, including its carbon composite fuselage and wings. Between having their resources locked up in the A380 and developing the A350 to compete with Boeing's 777, Airbus simply couldn't build a compelling 787 competitor. As a result, the A330neo has garnered just one-fifth of the total orders of the 787. In the end, Emirates was the only airline with the kind of hub-and-spoke network that could effectively use the A380 at scale. They bought 123 of them, almost half of all A380s ever made, and they would have bought more if Airbus had offered a re-engined variant. But with no more orders, Airbus announced in 2019 that the very last A380 would be delivered to Emirates in 2021. Ironically, Airbus launched the A380 partially out of prestige, wanting to build something even more iconic than the 747. But they ended up stopping production of the A380 before Boeing stopped making the 747. The plane that was supposed to replace the Queen of the Skies ended up having a shorter production run than the aircraft it was meant to defeat. To be clear, Boeing's strategy wasn't the only reason the A380 failed or the 787 succeeded. The success of an aircraft program depends on countless variables. But looking at how this all played out, it's hard not to wonder if Boeing knew exactly what they were doing when they approached Airbus with that joint research proposal back in 1993. Whether it was an intentional strategy or just brilliant opportunism, the result was the same. Airbus spent $25 billion on a plane that lost money on every single sale, while Boeing dominated with the 787. So, was this all an elaborate strategy by Boeing, or did Airbus simply make a massive error on their own? The truth is, the answer probably lies somewhere in between. What we do know is that Boeing recognized Airbus's ambitions and potentially used joint research to encourage those ambitions while they pivoted in a completely different direction.